UFC 297 Fight Week hasn't officially begun yet, but we are starting here early in Toronto. Drickus Duplessis, who fights Sean Strickland, and next Saturday's main event middleweight title. Drickus, uh, you got in here a bit early and everything. Just how are you liking Toronto so far? I know it's a little uh, nasty outside as far as weather. Yeah, I mean, being from South Africa, this is actually quite uh, refreshing. It's not something we see all the time. You know, uh, there's parts in South Africa where it snows, but not 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 near where I am, and it's a very small time of the year. So it's uh, it's really it's a uh, it's um, a change of, of scenery from fighting in Vegas, but um, yeah, loving it so far, loving people, loving the, the place, loving the snow. It's, 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 uh, I can only imagine, like, I don't know if I would love it the whole year round, but I mean, it's been good. Yeah, we came in a little bit earlier to climatize. Obviously, it's uh, quite a few time zones traveling from South Africa, but yeah, we got in Monday and yeah, feeling good. Yeah, doing all the things the right way. Obviously, this is a huge opportunity. Um, it's so funny, right? Because we talked about back in September, like, oh, maybe not taking the fight in Australia. Uh, how would this work out for you? Did you always have faith that you would get here and all the decisions you make were ultimately the right ones? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's it's about being patient and you know believing in in the work that you put in. And you know, there was no for me. There was never a, a moment where I thought. This was an opportunity for me to get a title fight. You know, uh, when I was supposed to fight in Australia, I deserved to fight for that title. And it wasn't possible to fight for it in, in, in Australia, but it wasn't an opportunity that I got, that I was given. It was an opportunity that I deserved. And, um, you know, when obviously, but it's also the fight game, the show must go on. And I thought to myself, if they're not giving me the title shot, then so be it. I'll just beat another guy. It doesn't matter if I beat him before the belt, after the belt, it really doesn't matter to me. And uh, that's where my mindset was at. I uh, just thought, well, if they're not giving me a media title shot, I'll just beat the next guy they give me. And you know, they can't keep me away from the belt forever. But uh, you know, ultimately, everything worked out exactly the way it should have. And uh, I just always knew it. And things always work out. I mean, it's, it's, that's the way of the world. You, know? if you, put in, you put in the effort and you, you'll reap the benefits. And that's exactly why we are here. For sure. And um, I mean, did any part of you when you saw what happened between Sean and Israel be like, damn, they might do a rematch here, the timeline might get pushed back? Or is it just what you said there? Like, if they did that and you had to fight someone else, that you're prepared for that step? Yeah, absolutely. I, the rematch didn't make any sense to me, I have to be honest. Uh, when I heard that was a possibility, I honestly didn't for one moment really think it was going to happen. It didn't make sense. And obviously the rematch with uh, Pereira made sense with, for Izzy because he was dominant for so long. But when he lost to Sean Strick, now you're looking at a guy who is um, two and one, or oh, well, one and two in his last three outings. That is, that's not deserving of a, of a rematch. And uh, I honestly didn't think that was going to happen. But if it was the case, like I said, you know, put on the next guy in front of me and uh, you know I'll, I'll get my shot I wasn't going to sit around and wait for a year to to get a title shot but you know I would have done what I had to to get that belt definitely and ultimately worked out here uh, it's been an interesting build up to this fight I mean the press conference was wild the stuff that happened in the crowd was wild um, what's kind of your mindset towards Sean as we go into fight week here like do you feel like you have a mental one up on him and top of the skills like what are you kind of thinking about him as we go into fight week here yeah, well, I don't think uh, the mental up on Sean Strickland came um, because of the press conference. It's, it's an IQ thing, but 100% uh, um, I'm one up on him mentally. But like I said, that has nothing to do with the press conference. Um, but even there, I mean, I beat him at his own game right there, uh, which I believe, um, yeah, I mean, Sean Strickland, like, I mean, this has been said many times. He dishes it out, but he couldn't take it. And, you know, it was, um, and, but that's that. I mean, that was the end, that's the end of, of that discussion. Um, I said what I said, and it's not something that I'll, I'll be hammering on. You know, I'm smart enough to get more stuff to, to piss him off. And, you know, I don't need to be hammering on anything. And um, in terms of um, my, my, my feelings towards him or my mindset towards Sean Strickland is, is exactly the same as, as it would have been if this wasn't a title fight. Right. For me, you know, I'm in there to do business. Whether I respect him as a person, which I do, and as a fighter, 100%. I think he's, a, he's an exceptional fighter. He wouldn't be a world champ without that. And even as a personality, you know, uh, he showed some weakness and cranks in his armor and after that press conference. You know, saying the stuff he does, you know, he's Sean Strickland. He says outrageous things. I think... Um, the hypocrisy came in where he almost 
he went out and said, listen, this is off limits. You can't speak about somebody's wife while he's doing the exact same thing. You don't say that. You, you know, um, um, calling Khalil Rountree out for, for crying and you know, saying uh, all sorts of stuff, then him crying. You know, th that hypocrisy, that exposed him a little. But, you know, I don't think he's a bad guy at all. I don't think he's a bad guy. He's a character I enjoy and um, I have. But what I think of him as an opponent and... Um, thinking about the fight my mindset is exactly the same that it would have been if we fought before even being ranked now, I'm, I'm seeing an opponent I'm seeing a guy I'm here to do my do my job do my business and yeah there's a title on the line now but it doesn't change anything for me the fact that there's no anger towards him I really don't um, you know I have more respect for him after what happened in the crowd and the press and all you know but you know I'm there to fight somebody I'm there to do my job and it doesn't really matter who it is that steps in there um, next week. I'll be ready. Why did your respect for him go up because of all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, I took on his manliness. I, you know, I was in his face and I told him, what are you going to do about it? And he, he stood up for himself. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's what a real man does. And I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm glad that he, he, um, he, he has that in him. To, no matter what the, what the situation, what the repercussions, he didn't think about it. He, he said, I'm standing up for myself, and, he, and rightfully so. So, I mean, that's where the respect comes from, because that's exactly what I would have done. Was there any fear with, you know, what happened in the crowd there? Like, it might jeopardize the fight or something. You know, he cuts you, things like that. Like, weird things can happen in moments like that. So, did it work out? I guess if that was going to happen, it was best case scenario and how it ultimately unfolded? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's always a possibility, but there was never the fear of that. I mean, there was no time. There's no time to think about that stuff. But, you know, the way he hit, there was no cuts going to happen. I can feel that, tell you that. The way those shots landed. Um, I, I heard a lot of people saying it was staged. You know how it must suck if you try and just jump a guy, jump over a chair. Obviously, I was facing him, so it wasn't like a sucker punch. But he jumps on top and just starts throwing elbows and punches. And you're a professional fighter. And most of the people think, including a guy like Robert Whittaker, thinks it's staged, right. think we're acting. I mean, that's not good. That's not good. If, you, if you're starting to, like, really throw down and somebody thinks it's fake punches, that sucks. I mean, <laughs> for him, for him, I mean. But... Uh, yeah, I guess um, afterwards you think about that. I know Dana came um, to me and said, listen, uh, this is the case. Like, we're really sorry about this. But obviously the police had him and the like, charges can be pressed because this is, uh, that's assault. You know, it's outside of a, a professional arena. So, and they, 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 they didn't try and convince me otherwise at all. They literally said, listen, you have, if you feel... Like that was uncalled for. We completely understand um, if you want to, you know, press star charges, take this further. And I said, no, 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 no. Please, no. We are two fighters. I mean, it was it was a good old scrap, you know, like like we did before we became professionals. And um, I just I just asked them, like, is there? Any, I I would love to make sure. I would even take the blame if that's if that's possible, just to make sure that you know, nothing happens to him. You know, we know um, to come to to Canada. They are very strict. Yes. Uh, they're very, very strict um, in getting into the country, and I just wanted to make sure that nothing happens that uh, that the fight's in jeopardy. And you know, I never, I never thought that Sean Strickland, never even think of it that of him trying to get a way out. He's not that type of guy. He's a type of guy that's always game. He's a guy that will go on, go out on his shield and and do it with honor. And as far as the fight itself, I mean, people look at you know your first five rounder in the UFC. Uh, we know like cardio and you know, output and stuff seems to be his strong suit. Um, how do you think it ultimately comes together in the cage? Do you feel like this is going to be a longer fight where you might have to show off uh, how you compete over five rounds, or do you feel like you can maybe put him out earlier? I always say this: if 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 need be, I have one decision in my whole career, and that is uh, Brad Tavares. And in that fight. We came to a situation where the fight pace, if you go look at the punches thrown in that fight, just the pace, go look at that fight again. And you'll see what I'm made of. You'll look, you look at a guy like Brad DeVos, who has a lot of five-rounders, who's been in the UFC forever. Truly, truly one of the most durable guys in the world. And uh, when we came, got to that third round, you know, he definitely won the first round, I won the second. And in that third round, you know, commentators were saying listen Drikas is tired he's really tired it doesn't matter how tired I am I'm going to do what I need to do to win the fight so if this is a Sean Strickland fight of punching really 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 soft 
and um, you know, you know, jab, jab, jab. If that's the case, which it won't be, I won't allow it. Then we'll be the end of, I'll be there in the fifth round, making sure I win this fight by decision and convincing you, because that's what it takes to become the world champion. But in my honest opinion, and this fight's not going to distance. There's no way. He's a guy that walks forward. I'm a guy that likes to go forward. I've never been in, I've said this, and this is one thing. This is a fight game. Anything can always happen. But I can promise you this. I've never been involved in a boring fight in my life. And I promise you I won't because that's a choice. A boring fight's a choice. And um, I know I know it's not going to be boring. You know, this is going to be one of those fights. This is, this is, this is a, if, if he can stay standing, if he can take what I give, this is a fight of the year contender, 100%. But I'm, I'm ex excited to, to become world champion. I'm excited to fight Sean Strickland. I'm excited to put on a show, finally get my main event. Uh, I said it, I'm, I was so jealous of, even when I fought Whitaker, of the guys on the poster, signing that poster. I'm like, I want to be on that poster now. Now, here we are, yeah. you know, just a couple of months later. But you know, at the end of the day, um, just as a fan, I can't wait to see this fight. No, it's going to be exciting for sure, obviously. It's been more than five years since they've been here in Toronto, so uh, a lot of good energy from the fans and everything. Uh, as far as like what fight week is going to be like, you mentioned like the one-up. Do you think at the press conference and things like that, he's going to be trying to like make up some of that ground, being like, he got me last time in the opinion of a lot of people. Now I need to you know, show either I'm not mentally beat or uh, vulnerable to Drickus. Like, What do you think it's going to be like when you guys are in front of each other again? Well, he cried. He cried on international, on international. Well, I don't call it television. Like he cried on the world stage. I mean, this. and like I said, I'm glad he got it out. I hope it's over now. But you know, there's not going to be one-ups. So, no, there's no one-ups. What's going to happen is going to happen. We'll see how it plays out. But you know, right now my focus is on the fight. You know, I'm not here to be funny. I'm not here to to try and and create something that there's not. I'm here to be a professional. I'm here to 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 be the next champion of the world, and that's that's why I'm here. I'm not I'm not going to be here to try and one up or get even further. I'm going to do what I'm going to do, and he's going to do what he's going to do. And but right now, it's almost senseless to try and create more hype. The hype's been created. That, that's 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 that took care of itself. Right now, to me, this is business. The whole fight week is business. Everything I handle, I'll handle it like business. And, and Saturday night will be um, signing on the dotted line, you know, closing the deal. Do you think people like are going to see more of this as you become champion, as you go into a reign? Like, I think they saw, you know, maybe your, some of your speaking abilities, some more of your personality in that press conference. Is there more of that to come? Like, as people get to know you a little bit better and you get to showcase yourself on platforms like this? Yeah, I think uh, for me, I try and be myself as really as much as I possibly can. And when I'm when I'm you know, up, up on stage, in the arena, I was speaking to people. So if you come in there and you are respectful to me, I'll be respectful to you. But I'm, I love a little bit of banter. If you want to make it a friendly little bit of banter, we can go that route. I like that. I'm always keen. But if you want to go the, the route of insulting and disrespecting me, I promise you I can do it back. And definitely better than you can. And I feel like, uh, just a couple last things here, um, it's almost disrespectful to ask a first-time title challenger, like, what's next? What's going to come? And because you've worked so hard to get to this point, but I feel like it's hard to ignore kind of with this one. Like, there are people are looking at the glaring hole in the schedule, like UFC 300. There's Hamzad out there saying that he's been promised the title shot. Israel saying he might come back this year. Um, have you got any indication what could come after this? Like, would it quick turnaround for 300 even be possible obviously depends on the fight what are you kind of thinking in your mind's eye yeah for me i have to be completely honest with you this fight is just like every other fight has consumed me the, the title has always been the next step the step closer to the title the step closer to the title right now my step the one big step far from the final step is fighting for that belt and my mind my whole life can stop on that night. And like I said, I'll win or I'll die trying. My life in my mind stops after that fight. And after that fight, my whole life is in front of me. This, to me, is the end for me. Because this has been the goal for such a long time. This, this goal. And I don't really care what happens after that for now. 
Right now, I'll start thinking about what happens after that when we get there. Then my planning starts for the rest of my career. And uh, I'm really excited for that part because it's going to be even more spectacular. But for now, this is, a, this is almost a, this is the, the end of Jig is not as a champion. And that ends next week, Saturday. I mean, I assume too, like people talk about maybe turning right around, but I assume you want to bring the belt home, like kind of have that celebration tour and stuff. Is that something you think about, like the aftermath of being able to get that moment to, to bring the title home? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm going back to South Africa. I'll, I'm spending a couple of days in Canada to enjoy Canada for for what it has to offer, because right now I see a lot of great food places. I see, you know, it looks amazing. But right now we can't enjoy any of that, but I'm staying a couple of four or five days extra. And then I'm going home. Like I promised uh, my people back home, my country, every single person uh, in South Africa and Africa that I'm bringing about to Africa, to my home swell, where I stay, where I train. And uh, this will be history. This will be history that's made and I can't wait for that moment. I've envisioned it, I've, I've felt it, I dream about it. This is gonna be insane. I can't wait to, to lift that, that belt uh, on home swell. And just last thing, I mean, people, you're going to get asked this ad nauseum going into the week, like about Hamza, about Israel. Um, of those two, do you feel like you, you ultimately end up fighting them both anyway? So it doesn't matter the order, it doesn't matter when, who comes back and stuff. Like those are probably going to be your first two title defenses regardless, do you think? Um, I don't know. As far as I know, Hamza, it's a while to wait. Um, what, what middleweight did he fight? He fought at middleweight, but he fought a while to wait. Mm -hmm. I mean... Close. This was probably Gerald Mearshart. Yeah, I mean, Gerald Mearshart. I mean, when was that? Where was he ranked? I don't even know. I don't think he was at the time. No, he wasn't ranked. So, in my opinion, that makes absolutely no sense. The UFC promised him a title fight. Where in the world does that happen? And he says, no, he's fighting Strickland. No, you're not. If there's a champion, if you get a title shot, I'm the champion. You're not going to get a title shot. And you know, Israel Desanya, that's, uh, that makes sense. Last thing, what kind of champion do you want to be uh, when you have that belt? You know, a lot of things are going to come your way. A lot of people are going to come out of the woodwork being like, want to be your best friend, you know, ask for things of you. Uh, how prepared are you for that chapter in life? And I guess just what do you want to represent when you do have that belt? Yeah, I want to represent um, my country, my upbringing, my parents, um, my culture, being Afrikaans, uh, South African. I want to represent the, um, the people we are how amazing we are, how amazing, how amazingly I grew up and the, the, the upbringing I got from my parents, from my culture. It's something that is completely unknown to the, to the fight world and I would love to, to share that with the world. And um, then of course, be, be myself, because I'm not, you know, you, you get that in a sense where people, you have to be a certain way, people expect you to be, and I see that killing people's souls. I'm not, I don't want to be that, you know, I'm going to party, I'm going to get drunk, I'm going to, the same way that I've always done it. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, now everybody's filming it. That's, and I mean, it's even been like that now, but, you know, film whatever you want. You know, I have the people, the right people around me, I always have. When it's time to play, I play hard. When it's time to work, I'm the hardest worker in the world. I know that for a fact. So I'm going to try and be unapologetically myself. And um, I have to, like I said, I've always had the right people around me, my same team, coaches, my parents, my, my brothers, my friends, the, the loyal, the people who were there from the beginning. And I think that's the, that's the secret. That's the secret to staying grounded and staying true to yourself is not having, because like you said, a lot of people will now come and say, listen, oh, I want this and, you know, act. It's all act because now the, it's the limelight. No, it's, it's about, you know, keeping the real ones close to you and, and having people around you whose opinion you can really trust. Not people who just say the things you want to hear. And that's, that's, that's what I believe is the downfall of a lot of people. And it won't be mine. Awesome, well, I think this was a great table setter. I've taken enough of your time here, but we're going to speak to you more throughout Fight Week as we get going here. So uh, make sure everyone, of course, tunes into the coverage on MMA Junkie and watch this man January 20th, UFC 297 main event. Again, Sean Strickland. Let's go.